um, book series coming out called the Beaumont Bros. The Beaumont Bros. Circus Series. So this is going to be very interesting, and we'll be going live with her soon, very soon. And right now. Oh, hi. Good. It's nice to meet you. Hi. Me too. <laughs> How are you? I'm I'm good. Just uh um it ended the day and and uh this is a great way to end it. It is going to be lovely. I'm so excited to interview you. I saw your uh you were reading parts of your book on Facebook Live and I was like, Oh, this is just lovely. I love seeing oh. people. Why thank you. Hi. Thanks for listening. I have oh let's see. Hello, Marley. Thank you for coming. <laughs> um, alrighty then. I'm gonna go on ahead and get started with the interview. So that and how I like to fill these interviews uh, with authors on this author author Instagram uh, interview series that I do now. For over three years and am a YA thriller writer. So, for Tabby Slick, um, what did you want to be as a child, and was it an author? Um, so, I think I, I definitely went through that phase of wanting to be a lot of different things. Um, when I was very young, it was, you know, anything from being a princess to a police officer, if you can believe it. Um, but I was always reading and writing, and I, I think that wanting to be everything basically is just being a part of what makes a writer. Um, and I was always reading writing as a child and um, being a writer, you have to take on a lot of different jobs and learn new skills very quickly. And so I think wanting to be a lot of different things when I was younger just prepared me for this. That's very, that's a very good point that you mentioned there. That as a writer, you know, we kind of have to become other people while we're writing. And we have to assume, you know, their pers kind of their, what their personality is. And I think that in order to express that, we kind of put ourselves in their shoes. So having experience in a lot of different fields kind of helps with that. Definitely. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> okay, in the life of Tabby, like, look like. It is Tabby, right? Yes, it is Tabby. <laughs> I want to make sure I was pronouncing it correctly. Yeah, perfect. Um... Well, a day in my life, well, I get up and have breakfast. And then, um, well, recently, well, not too recently, it feels like it's been forever. Um, uh, my office changed. I am upstairs now in the, the little loft on a folding table. So I make my way upstairs after, <laughs> um, after breakfast and my, my spouse goes to the office and um, just work. Uh, it depends on what project I'm in, um, if I'm in the writing mode, or if I'm doing rewrites for my editor, uh, or if I'm working on um, a project for somebody else. It, it just really depends. That commute, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know. The commute is hard. It's, it's every day's leg day. <laughs> yeah, every day's leg day. Well, go ahead and get the work done and got the jams, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, so that's your, that's a day in your life, but how do you inspire yourself when you get writer's block? Um, so writer's block, <laughs> it's something that you, it, it, I'm not exactly sure what causes it. It's really frustrating though. Um, but I do three different things and the first two are writer writing related. Um, because I think if we don't keep those those muscles flowing of the whole writing process, um, it can be challenging to get back into it. Um, but the first thing I do is uh, I'm usually working on uh, a couple different projects. They're never in the same genre or the same writing style. So if I get um, blockage on one side, then I switch to the other. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I switch projects um, or I blog. That's a, that's a, entirely different, um, uh, different one. Yeah. Um, the second thing I try, if that doesn't work, because sometimes that doesn't, um, is I, so I try to think of the end, um, and write the ending. 
Um, that is something that I was always terrified about doing. I was like, what is this? Why would I do that? Um, but really, it actually helps. And um, my uh, NaNoWriMo project, um, I was working on the final book in my trilogy. And I did this just like, I, I need to figure out how to get my 50,000 words in a month. <laughs> and um, anyway, possible. Uh, any way possible. It could be just a hundred buzz. I don't know. It, just crap. Just let it fly onto the page. Um, but I, I wrote the ending and it was incredible. It filled in all the gaps that I needed and it allowed me to go back and write the rest of the story because I figured out where I needed to be. I like that tip because um, a, a lot of times I, I think that, you know, a writer's block comes from having a roadblock kind of in the story it's kind of like you don't know how to get get past it but in order to write the end it's like it gives you direction so it kind of yeah helps, kind of helps you paint paint through the, the rough parts because yeah i think that that's i think it's one of the benefits of at least partially being a plotter instead of a pantser because it's like having some direction it kind of helps the story flow and helps you avoid the writer's block right exactly and you know it it also helps um, to, you know, if none of that works, just go outside, go for a walk, um, and all the other things that, that people will tell you about writer's block. Just get away from it. <laughs> That's true, and I love listening to music, too. Mm -hmm. And cooking, I think doing, you know, I guess your passions, your hobbies, things that, you know, make you relax can kind of help get through it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you. Um, so for you, what do you think, coffee or tea? Uh, both, actually. Um, yeah, I, I like coffee in the morning. And then um, I'm also fond of an afternoon tea. And um, there's a really good glazed uh, lemon loaf tea flavor. It's like the perfect dessert. It's so good. Oh my gosh, the glazed lemon loaf tea. I love that. I recently made some uh, vegan uh, cookies. With, with oh yes, with lemon zest in them. So they're like sugar cookies with lemon zest in them. And um, what I did was I I uh, took out no egg, so I did a flaxseed egg, which is a flaxseed egg. Yeah, I've heard of flaxseed. But <laughs> yeah, it's very cool. It's a very cool way to take kind of take egg out of baking, and it works the same way. So to use take ground up flax seeds, like the really ground up ones, and add equal, equal amounts of water to it. So you make like use a tablespoon from one egg, uh, the equivalent mm. of the egg, uh, to replace one. And you do like a tablespoon of flax seeds and then a tablespoon of water, stir it, and it'll, it'll start gelatinizing. And it'll get the consistency of egg. Yes! That's crazy. Yes, if you add it to your baking, your baking, uh, whatever it is if you're, if you're baking, and it takes the place of egg perfectly. Love that. Wow. Awesome. I, I love finding different kind of replacements for to make things vegan and vegetarian or more plant-based in some sort of way. I like these yeah. those. Nice. I, I recently did um, uh, figure it out how to make um, waffles, but with, like, coconut and... Um, with like and protein um because protein always makes everything like really really gritty um but uh there's that and cashew milk like just really really make it fluffy wonderful i recently did some protein uh protein bowl like things with dates and walnuts and cashew butter in it it was good oh yum uh -huh. I wow love <laughs> cooking i post a lot of it on, on my instagram page now i love cooking and, and during, you know, self-isolation and quarantine and everything, it's like, there's even more time to cook. I love that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a good positive. It is. Just, it's this one positive. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in your opinion, what is one of the best movie or TV adaptations of a book? Ooh. Okay. So <laughs> I am probably going to be a little bit unpopular for saying this, but um, I have to say Lord of the Rings. Um, the, the book just, I'm sorry, it has so much monologue, so much monologue, and I, I couldn't get through it. The, the Hobbit was better, but Lord of the Rings, I just couldn't get through. Yes. Oh, hi, <laughs> <I> Dean. <laughs> <laughs> make some more of my cookies <laughs> yeah <laughs> or the lemon the lemon zest yes the lemon zest they were good <laughs> I them like um i yes the lord of the rings i love that they did those in new 
Zealand because that's like secretly one of my favorite places in the world. I want to go there. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it was just beautiful. And it really incorporated all the details that were like necessary from the books into the movies. I really want to see the Harry Potter series, but I want to read it first. Oh. Yes. Yes, definitely read them first. <laughs> I don't want to do I've never read any of the Harry Potter books, so I'm curious, very curious. And my favorite adaptation of a book would be Silence of the Lambs, personally for me. Interesting. <laughs> Rather <laughs> creepy. <laughs> I love that because I love, I love the movie, but the book was kind of boring, actually. So it ended up being really, that's my favorite. Oh, nice. And actually, I didn't realize that was a book. Yes. It was actually a book series. And amazingly, they say the sequels are always, always the worst. It was actually a sequel to the book. It was also a sequel to the first movie. But it's, it acts as a standalone. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. It was really good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alrighty. So would you like to tell us what your book is about? Or what your mini books are about? Um, so my books are, <laughs> um, well, they're a part of the transitioned universe. Yeah, Thomas Harry. Uh, What's the comment? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and the transition universe is just basically the world of magic, um, the governing forces and history that all of my series are based upon. Um, and the... So I, I saw that you uh, did a shout out for a Beaumont Brothers Circus Mystery. So thanks for that. Um, that's actually my second series. Um, that series stemmed from a couple of characters that appeared in my trilogy, the first in the transitioned universe, um, the Tompkins School trilogy. And uh, that's actually a, a dark urban fantasy. So slightly different than my mystery series. Um, but it's about twins who are shipped off to a strange boarding school in the middle of the Arbuckle Mountains. And there they discover that they are shapeshifters with superpowers. But something dark lurks on the campus that is trying to control them and use their powers for evil. Um, and actually the final book in the trilogy is uh, out now for, uh, for pre-order. Yay, very cool. That reminds me of uh, their shapeshifters, but a uh, force is trying to use them for bad. Like I'm sorry? It's like it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bad force has already got him, though. Yeah, just a little. <laughs> They're fighting for the good. That's the best. There's definitely some anti-hero elements uh, to the stories. Um, I think that, um, that those are just the most realistic heroes there are. I think so, too. I've done a webinar series on different types of characters in books, protagonists, antagonists, and antiheroes. Antiheroes are always my favorite because they're the most complex. They have the most depth. They have the most, I think, I think the most realisticness to them and uh, the most relatability. De definitely. They're my favorite. They're <laughs> always my favorite. <laughs> like Luther, the uh, kind of... Oh. So I am definitely a plotter. I always make a plan. If if you didn't get that from <laughs> uh, by now, um, right? <laughs> but um, I, like I feel lost without having a good outline. But you still need to be uh, even with the most well made plans. They still have to be uh, flexible. Um, and sometimes your your characters need to be let off the reins um, so that they can explore the world that they're in. And sometimes they show you some things that you never even noticed before. That's very cool. I like that. It's like um, you kind of learn your characters as you go, but you try to kind of give them direction in the beginning, but they still kind of, you know, kind of write themselves a little bit as the process goes on. Exactly. Yep. Um, so what does the act of writing itself mean to you? Oh, <laughs> so this one, um, 
I think that we all have stories within us. And um, the act of writing is a, a form of honoring those stories that are in each and every one of us um, that just really want to take us on our next adventure. I like that. That's great. It's like, um, it's like an expression of yourself. As yes. Different parts of yourself and exploring, I guess, even how you would react if you were a, a different person with different circumstances, even, even a magical realm. <laughs> <laughs> right. Very interesting. It gives you a lot of insights, even, I feel. And maybe even empathy, like extra empathy. Um, so what's the hardest bit, what has been the hardest thing about publishing for you? And what has been the most fun as well? So I'll start with the, the high hardest. Um, I would say the, the hardest has been learning to uh, take and accept criticism. Um, that is an important aspect. It's the hard lesson to learn, uh, but the sooner you learn to accept, um, um, take and accept criticism, um, even the harshest, um, how you deal with that is going to define you as a writer in the future. That's true. That's true. I, uh, I think that's a very good um, point because a lot of people get criticized and then they, they kind of almost breaks their spirit a little bit. But it can really help to be a growth process to help us be even better writers in the future because all of the writers who have been successful have been criticized first. And it doesn't mean that they're bad. It just seems like, you know, their talents need to be refined sometimes. And that's okay. Yeah. You know, if we're if we're not refining ourselves, then we're not improving. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the, uh, on the positive side, the the funnest thing, at least for me, um, is being able to write the end. Um, even after finishing five books, it it still hasn't lost its it the sense of I've accomplished something, and it's so satisfying. Um, and it was hard the the first time um, that um, that I uh, wrote. It was like, how do I ever get to the end? Um, but now that I have, it's it's just that much easier. Um, and I like Dean's uh, advice of avoiding good reads. <laughs> That's what I just saw the uh, bl uh, blushing face too. Like, yeah, good reads, the, the comments, the the whole the whole platform problematic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just don't go to your own reviews. You might not like what you see. Exactly, it, it has such potential too, but it just it needs help. It needs criticism and refinement. Um, so, do you have stories on the back burner that you are waiting to write, or that you have a plan for? Maybe series that we can see in the future. Um, I I do. So now that the Tonkin School trilogy um, has come to an end, tear. It's so sad because that was my first series. Um, the uh, Beaumont Brothers Circus Mystery, I do have uh, big plans for that. Um, I can't say too much on that. I, I can say that I'm writing the second, um, but I do have uh, big plans for that series. That's exciting. We all look forward to seeing that. Oh, thanks. Absolutely. So what advice would you give to budding writers out there who are you know, just eager and waiting to get to where the happy is? <laughs> um, oh. Okay, so uh, I would say don't do what I did um, and uh, not be patient. Be patient. Um, uh -oh. Writing. <laughs> writing. I, I, I was very impatient and just like rushed right in um, with just my first book. I was like, I ended and I can just dive right on it. But um, I needed to slow down a little bit. Um, it's publishing is not just about your first book. It's about your future book, uh, your future books. It's more about your future stuff than it is your first one. Um, so plot, plan, learn from others um, who have already gone through this before, and then strategize. Strategize. I'm trying to strategize myself because I'm debuting this year. And oh, congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have 
a young adult thriller coming out. It's called The Beckwith Brothers. Mm. It's about teen angst and forbidden romance, secret societies, and a 15-year-old murder mystery, all intertwining when three mysterious brothers return home to their small town in 1995. And so that's what's coming up for me. And I like I love using uh, having these author interviews because I feel like it's like it's a way that I can connect with other authors and also learn from them and have a platform where others like me can also learn from others like you too. So I really hmm. yeah, uh, just, and that's awesome. When is that coming out? Uh, October 2nd, uh, 2020, this year. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Awesome. Well, congratulations. That's amazing. Um, I, I think uh, Dean did ask about, you know, how to um, create, how to write um, uh, convincing women uh, characters. Um, and I, I'm not sure I have, I have advice for that. Do you have advice for that? <laughs> I can think of a few. I would say um, they don't always have to fit within the, you know, common uh, idea of a female or a woman. You know, normally think of females as maybe empathetic, compassionate, um, kind, sweet. You know, you can go outside the box with them just like we can with male characters and make them, you know, rough around the edges, anti-heroes, like we love anti-heroes. Mm -hmm. um, yes be the powerhouses or they can be the they can be queen pins you know even <laughs> they can be you know mysterious um i think also a good way is to uh, give them the depth the same depth as maybe you would a male character because a lot of times i think they make female characters sometimes in books kind of one-dimensional even unintentionally and so i think those two things would be definitely what i suggest <laughs> I, 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 yes, I agree. I, and um, Dean just made another joke. <laughs> Get off of here. No, I'm just kidding. I, I knew he was being a little uh, kitty here because he does have, he is an author <laughs> um, and he does write, I would say, unconventional women characters. Uh, one is a programmer, which shouldn't be unconventional, but apparently it is. Um, <laughs> and, and I love that. I, 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 like you said, um, female characters, putting them in things that perhaps in the past we were not put, uh, the boxes that we might have used to be put in, yeah. take them out. <laughs> yeah. And then if there are still, you know, females in those boxes, in those boxes, like maybe they're, maybe they are the domestic type, you know, still give them a personality, you know, maybe not so much like June Cleaver, <laughs> leave it to Cleaver, you know. Oh. <laughs> like June Cleaver that's cool but June Cleaver's like main purpose was to be June Cleaver like maybe she can be June Cleaver but still have interests beyond just being housewife you know give her dimension I think that's right important. yeah because <laughs> there's still domestic females like I feel like I'm a pretty domestic female but I still have interests outside of that I don't just yeah. do that only <laughs> right <laughs> I've never done it before, so this is this is fun. <laughs> it is amazing. Is that is that one of yours? I oh, no no. So that's that's Dean's book. Oh, I was getting a shout out to. <laughs> oh oh oh, that's you. Okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I I'm I I I have like the thing about uh, doing lots of different things. I, <laughs> I always am doing lots of different things at once. So. shrimp scampi kind of thing without the shrimp and I made chickpeas for some falafel for tomorrow I made breakfast and I made a smoothie all at the same time <laughs> wow okay I think you're my new role model <laughs> at least for like cooking and writing like I I I dabble just but very little very small amount <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, let's see. Okay, so we got three more questions left. Okay. This says, what publishing method were you most interested in at first? Like, before you were even published, were you interested in mostly in traditional, self-publishing, indie, hybrid? What, what kind of called to you at first? So, um, I, I remember the dilemma of, you know, what to, what to pick. Um, and it, I was back in 2015, I was thinking about, um, uh, publishing the story that I had been writing. Um, and I came across this article that compared tra traditional to indie and, uh, self. And, um, uh, one of the things that really turned me off from the uh the traditional is um i'm i'm a very creative person and so i i really like the freedom to be a part of the whole process from the beginning to the end although that's also that's a positive and a negative um but <laughs> yeah uh i consider myself an indie author and i love joanna Penn's um uh, description of these um, uh, joanna Penn, um she is an indie author uh, best-selling indie author, and uh, she's also the creator of The Creative Pen, uh, which has uh, loads and loads of advice um, for readers. Oh, I've seen that, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so she describes um, the difference between self and indie is self has a lot of the connotations that you are um, doing everything by yourself, and this is more of a hobby, whereas um, indie author, although there are any small presses, um, it, that's a whole, that's a different thing. But when you're a, an indie author, you have decided to make this your profession and you're working from the ground up, but you're also finding and working with professionals to make sure that you're, you're creating a quality product. Um, and so that's, um, uh, very much where I fall in. Um, and sorry. It underpin your efforts. Sorry, I didn't get that. They underpin your efforts when you're indie pub when you're independently published. The publisher comes in and they underpin all of your efforts. So it's kind of like you're working together and in tandem with you. But you still have a lot of control over your creative material, which is great. Yeah, yeah, that that is great. Uh, uh, so I I am an indie published, um, and and uh, I was actually in a a meeting this morning with the association, the publishing association that I'm involved in. Um, and they had a, a publicist who was leading the conversation. Um, and it, it's always really great when um, you hear later on about publicists whose main, um, their main uh, clients are the big five, um, kind of reaffirm a decision that you made five years ago <laughs> uh, or 10 years ago or, you know, uh, for me, it was five years ago. Um, uh, that the awesome thing about being indie, uh, especially right now, is that you have the flexibility to change. Um, and you can control and move your marketing plan. And you can rip out your book covers. You can put new book covers in whenever you want. Whereas um, in traditionally published, it was always up to the publisher and their creative team. So the positive with that is they have... Uh, a team, but the steps to get to be traditionally published um, is a, a long, a long uh, road, as with everything, um, but it not, might not get to being published. And uh, being uh, indie, you can, you can just do basically whatever you want, <laughs> um, and you can make those smart decisions yourself, um, as long as you're learning along the way. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a really good way to um, kind of like summarize so much of what goes into the, what's the differences between traditional publishing and indie publishing. Because it's like you know, it's like you're doing you have so much control over what you what you want to have control over, but then with the things of the in industry and getting it out in the industry and the marketing um, help and the marketing aids. It's good to have people who have had experience in the industry for a lot longer than you know an independently published author may have, in order to you know teach them, give them experience, um, and kind of like 
under, like I said, underpin your efforts uh, to make it both the best that it can be and get editors, like building editors, which is great. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, that's the, the other thing is when you're doing indie, um, and you're doing it all yourself, uh, you do have to go out and find your team, um, and find the associations to, to help you along the way. It's definitely a tribe effort. <laughs> yeah, that's really great. Oh dear. So a lot of the authors in Australia have been left behind by their contracts. Oh yeah. That's really difficult. Um, I, I, been so far, um, I was interested in hybrid publishing to publish my first book, um, and I sent out you know, a lot of queries and stuff, so I'm waiting on the replies for that, and something's going to happen. Um, but if not, I was, I was going to go on ahead and do the self, uh, self-publishing, but I was able to, I made my own book cover, I made my book trailers, I, I uh, put together my own bookstagram cover reveal tour. Um, I'm working on my cover, my uh, my book review tour for the month before the release, um, and I have a lot of magazine features coming up that I had to work and connect with. It. Um, so it's like a lot of it that I had to that I did do. I think that hopefully authors who um, who uh, have have maybe lost their contracts, like the authors in Australia that Dean is talking about, or people who haven't been in the industry yet, hopefully. They can find a way to um, use the resources that we have at hand to be able to publish their books and reach a level of success that is satisfying to them. Yeah, um, I have, and that was another thing that that really kind of veered me away from from going the traditional route. Is um, I, I've met several authors who, they're well, they didn't go with one of the big five, obviously, maybe not out of their choice, but. Um, and these small presses were going out of business and they had to fight to get their rights back to their stories. Um, and that's just a really devastating thing uh, when, when you trust, you know, uh, a, a press. And this is not to scare anybody away from, from that. Definitely do your research. This is just, you know, why I went this route is because um, there, there are those horror stories of people losing their rights to their stories for a matter of 10 years. And that's 10 years that um, oh. they could have had their story. Oh, wow. Uh, so D- Dean said you have done a really great thing to help us kind of understand, everybody watching understand Indies. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. I agree. Um, that is, I, one of the things that always is concerning to me when I see, um, bye, Dean. Get some rest. Bye, Dean. It was nice to chat with you. Have a good night. Um, so one of the things that is always concerning to me when I hear about someone being published by a traditional publisher is when they say the part they've sold worldwide to their stories. And mm. That's always such a cringe moment for me. And it's like, it's exciting because that's what they wanted, but it's like, also, that story that you put your heart and soul in, it's not yours anymore. It never, it never will be. And um, most of the profits aren't even going to go to the authors either because they sold the rest of their stories. And I'm like, you know, that's not really that great uh, situation mm. going on there. And that's why I was like, not totally interested in traditional publishing. But I, I, th- I feel like with the exposure you get with traditional publishing, that's helpful if you get that far. Because a lot of people have been published by traditional publishers, and they haven't gotten that far either. So it's like, mm. it, I mean, there's people on Wattpad who have more followers than people who've been traditionally published, truly. Um, and so it really depends, I think, on how you market yourself and how, uh, how well your story has been done and, and, and how well you can get it out there to be seen. And exactly. Also, in a lot of ways, we can do that ourselves anyway, because a lot of traditionally published authors are still in charge of marketing themselves. So it's like- oh, They still have to, yeah. Yeah, so it's like we're putting in a lot of the same work. We might as well just keep the rights to our stories. Yeah, and, and not to say that this is an easy thing to just do. It is, there are advantages and disadvantages. And I think that this could be an entirely, uh, a whole series on just that. <laughs> um, definitely do your research. And... Yeah. I'm getting so many ideas already. <laughs> <laughs> I have a self 
publishing blueprint that I'm working on, and I'm going to be offering it like around summer or something like that. I'm trying to get it together. But um, I, I wanted to, you know, because of this situation, I wanted to kind of help people understand how they can help themselves. If the traditional publishers are not something that they want, or is something they feel is out of reach, it's like we don't have to be discouraged. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Alrighty. Um, so in a perfect world, the second to last question. In a perfect world, what would your ultimate publishing goal be? Uh, so, and. Uh, Perfect world. Um, my goal is to, um, by 2023, is to have um, uh, my nine book series um, complete. Um, I'm hoping to have, so I'm halfway through writing the second um, to last, or sorry, the second book in my Abumont Brothers Circus Mystery. Um, it's a gas lamp fantasy. And um, so I'm hoping to have that complete here soon. And then starting on the third by Camp NaNoWriMo in July. Um, and so for me to be on um, time to meet my 2023 goal. Um, uh, so I've already set the publishing date. Should be in August for the second in my series. And then the um, third one um, I'm hoping will have be out in December. So I, I'm estimating two to three books um, per year um, is what I'm working up towards having. That's wonderful. And a perfect world, you know, I hope you have to do that even in this world. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, it's the goal. <laughs> I try to focus on what, you know, let me challenge myself here in this world. Um, make it just a little bit challenging, but still um, attainable. <laughs> I, I would love to, um, by the time I, I don't know here, but I, what I really want to do is after I release my first, like, three books, be able to turn some of them into movie adaptations that I want to direct and produce myself. Oh, wow. That's nice. That's what I really want to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting. Thank you. I have had such enjoyment with this. It's been so fun. And also, it, a lot of a lot of information that I, I hope is going to be very helpful to a lot of indies out there, a lot of budding writers out there. I know it was helpful to me, and it was very fun, too. And I love your series, and this has been so exciting and so fun. And so I'm going to pick up with, last question, <laughs> is how can we all find more about, find out more about Tabby Slick and your book series? The uh, yeah, so you can find out more about me uh, and all of my books, um, as well as the Transition to Universe that connects all of them together on my website, tabbyslick.com. Um, you can also connect with me on uh, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, at Tabby Slick. Um, I'm pretty active mostly on Twitter and some on Facebook, um, but also Instagram if you want to follow. And I will follow back with each other. Absolutely. I'm at the novelette. Oh, that's perfect. The novelette. Well. <laughs> My internet personality. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. I will be posting about your books and uh, promoting your books on my social media. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And uh, let me know. Um, I'm sure I'll see on, on Instagram, but um, let me know about your new release and um, all of that. You said it's a thriller romance? It is a young adult thriller with forbidden romance, secret societies, teen, mm -hmm. and murder. Murder. <laughs> that'll, that'll be interesting. It's coming out in October, which is crazy because my, my uh, last book in the trilogy is actually coming out October 20th. So <laughs> they're going to have a, a birthday together. They are. I look like I'm on my birthday. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> October 2nd. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's been so fun. I may have to create a series about what we were talking about, though, with the traditional publishing stuff. So I gotta put something together. Uh, uh, my uh, cue me in. I'd I'd be interested to help. Absolutely, I'm so excited for that.